Okay, now let's move on to the third section in this presentation. This one's about uh, how you can create content. Specifically, I want to talk about branding yourself as an expert. Uh, there's probably, you probably know a lot more stuff and you have a lot more content to share than you might realize right now. And once you start publishing stuff on WordPress, you're going to realize that you do have a lot of things to say and you're probably going to start attracting an audience to that. So um, content drives traffic and this is a great topic. When you create content, every single piece of content you create, you're also creating an opportunity to attract somebody new to your business that may not have known you existed before. And there's a lot of different ways to use content uh, to build a name for yourself and, and many strategies exist actually off-site um, where you can publish articles on other websites and so on. Right now I want to specifically talk about um, how to do it on your own website and specifically um, to that how it works with WordPress. But let's do it from the contrast of old versus new. So. Uh, I want to talk about dynamic content sites like WordPress versus the old school static site that I've already kind of bashed enough in this presentation. But um, let's look at, for example, take an old site and and so your static site has kind of a general recipe that it follows. You know, it'll have a static list of pages like the home page and the products page, and maybe there's a page to contact you or your list your staff members, depending on the kind of business you're in. You know, you might have upcoming events or you know, career things. And that list of pages doesn't really change. You may add a page once in a while, or you may update a page once in a while. And again, I've already talked enough about how um, cumbersome that was to do. But with static sites, the, the, you don't really think about adding to them all that often. And so what happens from a Google perspective, I've got Google in the middle here, Google now sees your static site, which is a good thing, uh, but it only sees, you know, six, seven or eight pages, or however many pages you have uh, stored in its database. And so there's only six, seven or eight places that people might find you. Um, these are like uh, reach points for you. Now, if we flip over to the dynamic website or dynamic content based website, the same kind of structure happens at the beginning. So when you first put up your uh, brand new WordPress website, you probably start with your your static list of things, your your homepage and your products page and all that, and you might add a couple of new blog posts because it is a blogging based platform. But the idea with a WordPress website is to get on a regular routine of content creation where when I go back to that whole talk about branding yourself as an expert, here is your opportunity to write a new article or do a new video or create some kind of tip sheet for your clients on a regular basis. And every time you do that, you're creating essentially a new page or a new um, point that gets indexed by Google. So let's take the example of doing one article per week for a year. Here are 52 articles at the end of the year. Each article is indexed on its, as its own page in the Google um, search repository. So now you have your you know, seven or eight pages plus 52 uh, articles, not now a total of, let's say, 60 places where you're indexed in Google search engines. You could take that a step further. Now, you know, let's say you also want to, as an additional uh, benefit for your followers or for your audience, interview an expert in your, in your industry once every couple of weeks and just get their thoughts or feedback or, or ideas on a topic. Uh, you do that once every two weeks, you have 26 new pieces of content on top of all that other stuff at the end of a year. And then one other thing that you could do is, is invite guest authors or guest speakers or whoever to come to your website and create additional content for you. Again, adding more stuff into the Google repository. Let's say you do another one of those every couple weeks. Now you've got 26 guest articles. You're looking at over 100 pieces of content after a single year, each piece of content individually stored in Google's database and searchable. So these are places that people may find you and may find your content. That's the power of a dynamic website. And you could obviously take this much further. You could produce a lot more content than this. And over time, like imagine what this would look like over five years or 10 years. It's really quite staggering, the power of this and the ease at which this is done. If you remember back a couple slides ago, I showed you within about three steps, you can um, take a brand new blog post and publish it on your website very, very simply. So. Um, now that we're on the topic of content creation, let's talk about the, uh, the different forms of content creation that are available. Um, if you haven't yet done so, I definitely recommend you read um, uh, 
Gary Vaynerchuk's book called Crush It. It's it's about social media and the social media revolution. He's a huge Twitter guy, um, but I love his book because it, uh, it, it talks about a lot of the stuff that I'm kind of getting into in this presentation. But he basically breaks it down to saying, you know, you have to figure out what your DNA says about you and how you like to, to share and creatively express yourself. So are you a writer? Are, are you a talker? Maybe, you, you know, you like to use audio or, you know, you'd be perfect on the radio if you, if you had a dream career. Or, or maybe you're a video person. You like to get in front of a camera and act or, or you know, just speak to a camera or speak to people and, and at the same time to have them look at you. Maybe you want to be a professional speaker. Doing video is a great way to train yourself uh, to think on your feet and all that stuff. So uh, the way you create content will come down to what you prefer. And, and so that's why I also say you can do combinations of these things. You never have to lock yourself into one form of content creation. You know, on day one, you can say your, you know, your WordPress site is a written blog. But three months down the road, there's nobody that's going to stop you from changing your blog post into videos. That's what I did, and many people do that, and it works quite well. Um, and another thought I just had is, uh, you, when, you, when you talk about combinations here, let's say you're not ready to get on camera yet and, and show your face, but you do like the idea of giving something visual for people to look at. Well, you could take a slideshow like I'm doing right now, do a narration over top of it, and publish it as a video. That's something that you could actually send into YouTube. Now you've got YouTube content and audio content. Plus, you may have written some notes around that, so you're, you really have all kinds of opportunities here to create content using these three medium. Uh, now, I want to get into content creation strategies because I find that is the first place that most people uh, struggle with when they get their blog or their, their WordPress site going. You know, where, where do I get ideas to write stuff or how do I know how to shoot my first blog video? And there's basically three areas I want to focus on here. The first one is you and your experiences, your stories in your life and the things that you have that you want to share with people about what you've experienced or what you know. Um, another angle to come at it with, and this is the second content creation strategy, is other people's stories and their experiences and what they can teach you and what they can teach your audience. And then the third strategy is uh, responses and reactions. And this is, a, this is a way for you to look at other stuff that's already out on the internet or other content that's already been published and for you to react to that, either aggressively or in, in an opinionated way or agree with it or disagree with it or whatever. Um, but that can be a great source of inspiration for you to create content. I'm going to go into a couple of, uh, of very specific examples for all three of these in, in the next couple slides.